Hello there, it's me again, it's Ian the Storyteller and uh, we're back with you from Eureka at home and of course we're all at home at the moment and uh, we've got you another offering uh, me and my wife have been working hard all week to bring you this little video I hope you enjoy it and if you do enjoy it, please share it with your friends so they can enjoy it too uh, but before the story, a little riddle and of course it's our weekly competition and if you can get the answer to the riddle Put it in the comments box at the bottom of the video and uh, we'll draw a hat, uh, draw out the hat, the correct uh, answer or one of the correct answers and whoever gets it right will win the little prize. And the prize is a family pass to Eureka when eventually Eureka opens and we're all allowed to go down there. So the riddle is quite a difficult one this week, so you have to think hard about it. And please don't cheat, don't go on Google to get the answer. Have a little think, talk to your friends, see if you can come up with the answer and put it in the comments box below the video and the riddle goes like this if I'm holding a bee in my hand what have I got in my eye if I'm holding a bee in my hand what have I got in my eye so there's your riddle and if you watch the story that's coming up it might give you a little bit of a clue, but you'll have to listen carefully. And uh, that's it. Uh, enjoy the story. Thank you very much. Ta-ta for now. Well, you know, once upon a time, Jack and his three brothers they were off working down in the woods. Their job was to chop down trees and cut up the wood to sell for people's fires at winter time. Well, they'd been working all day and tea time came and they rummaged around inside their bags for something to eat and the only thing they could find was porridge oats. Well, they took out their cooking pots and they filled it with water and it was only then that they realised that they had no fire to cook it on. Well, they didn't have the makings of fire, you see, and so the eldest brother said, You two wait here. I shall go down to see the beekeeper and see if I can get some fire from him. The eldest brother approached the beekeeper's house and he raised up his hand and he knocked on the door tentatively. And to the door came the beekeeper. Hello! I'm the beekeeper, and you're very welcome at me door. Well, it's great to meet you, said the oldest brother, but I'm hoping that you might lend us some fire so we can make porridge to eat. Right ho! You're very welcome to a bit of fire, but first I was thinking you could do me maybe a little song or a little dance to entertain me so. Well, Jack's brother explained that singing and dancing uh, weren't the kind of things he was used to doing. Chopping wood was more his work, you see. And so the beekeeper said, What? No song and no dance? Well, then you can clear off. Well, Jack's eldest brother went back to the camp and he explained to his brothers what happened. And his middle brother said, Well, maybe where the eldest has failed... I can succeed, and so he went all the way back to the beekeeper's house. He was welcomed by the beekeeper, and the beekeeper said, Well, I'm sure you can have some fire, but first I was thinking you could do me a little song, or you could tell me a little story to entertain me so. Well, songs and stories, said the middle brother, are not really my kind of thing. Chopping wood is uh, how I make a living. Uh, but I really need the fire. What? No song? No story? Well, then you can clear off. But once again, the middle brother went all the way back to the camp and explained what happened. And Jack stood up and said, Well, where my oldest and my middle have failed, maybe I can succeed. He went all the way down to the beekeeper's house. He knocked on the door and was welcomed and was asked to be entertained. But Jack replied, I can't dance. And I can't sing, but how do I get the fire? And the beekeeper said, Well, you can't dance, and you can't sing. Well, then, what are you going to do for the fire? Well, I'll tell you what, says Jack. 
I can't dance and I can't sing, but the one thing I'm good at is telling good stories. So here's the deal. I'll tell you a story that you won't believe. But if you interrupt just once, you have to give me the fire no matter what. Deal? Right ho, young'un. I'm listening. But there's no way that you can make me interrupt no matter what you say. Well, you see, said Jack, there was a time when I had a piebald horse. And I used to take this horse into the woods to go logging. But well, one morning I set off me riding on the horse's back and my axe stuck in its belt. Well, the horse went trot, 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 and I went bump, bump, bump. And I'll tell you, didn't the axe come down thump, thump, thump and cut the rump? right off that horse. Cut it clean off. Well, I'll tell you, I rode that half of a piebald horse for three whole years until I spied its rump, bald as ninepence, standing in the meadow and nibbling grass. So I'd a mind to catch it, and catch it I most certainly did. Well, I took the two halves of that horse and I stitched them back together and no finer horse have you ever met. And I rode it from one side of the country to the other for another three whole years. But there came a particular day where my eyes opened wide and the horse stood on its hind legs and we spied the mightiest oak we'd ever seen. It was so tall, it touched the very sky itself, and had a mind to leave the horse behind and climb. But the strangest thing, when I got up there in the sky, I found out that cows weren't worth as much as flies. And so I had a plan. I climbed down the mighty tree and I gathered myself a huge sack and I went off across the country and caught as many flies as I could stuff inside. But when I arrived above the sky, with me bag of flies in me hand, I sold those flies for a fortune. And you know, I had enough money to buy me own herd of cows. But I had a mind to take them back down to me own land. But you can imagine my astonishment when I arrived at the place where the mighty oak had been. It had been felled, cut down, you know. But I took a hair from every cow I owned and I wove it into a mighty rope. I lowered it down towards the ground and I started to climb down. Well, I've usually been sure of my own journey, but that rope was short. And so I started to swing from side to side, hoping I could put my foot upon the ground. Lo and behold, I fell, and I landed up to me neck in mud, and I couldn't get myself out. While thinking me journey was over, suddenly I saw my brother duck, and I gave him a wave, hoping he would help. But nay, brother duck didn't help at all. Upon my head he laid his eggs in a nest, and left me there to suffer. But when a friend is in need, there's a friend indeed. And didn't there come across the land my cousin, the Red Fox? Well, I'm sure that Red Fox would help. And so I gave him a little wave. But you know, Red Fox, he thinks with his nose and his belly. And he met those eggs 
and he had a mind to take them away, and so I grabbed his tail and I pulled it hard. And off went Fox, pulling me clean out of the ground. And wasn't I safe once again to go on my journey? But you know, the strangest thing that I saw in all that time, as I went towards my own home, was two men coming down the road towards them, and I recognised them. For one of them was my grandfather, and the other was yours, Mr Beekeeper. And sure wasn't my grandfather giving your grandfather a piggyback, because isn't it right that my grandfather is stronger than yours. What? There's no way that's true. I can accept most of the things you've told me, but there's no way that my grandfather would have a piggyback from the likes of your grandfather. It would be the shame of my family. Oh. <laughs> and so, of course, because the beekeeper had interrupted, he had been bested by the youngest of the brothers, our dear Jack. And he took that fire and back into the trees he went and they boiled up that porridge and they ate well that evening. And dear friends, that's the end of the story of Jack and the beekeeper. Much love and much light, I thank you. <laughs>